One of the worst things you can do is waste time. That's why I make these intros so darn short. This video is six ways to be more efficient in your eBay listing. And you know what? Time is money. So when you save time, you save money. You're gonna wanna separate your money. Tip number one is separate your darn accounts. You wanna separate your personal account from your business account. Have personal checking and have business checking. You can go to your bank, you can do this. It might cost a little bit of cash, but my credit union does it for free. It's awesome. You wanna do that because of one main reason, and that's the time it will save you come tax time. If you have your accounts in a mingle, which you don't wanna do, then you're gonna to have to go through every single statement and go, well, geez, was that for my own personal Barbie cookout collection I bought, or was that for the Barbie cookout collection I bought that I was trying to sell? It's a bad problem to have. If you don't separate your accounts, come tax time, your job gets a whole lot more difficult. You have your business money, you have your personal money, you buy things to sell from thrift stores, retail arbitrage, whatever, from your business money and you take the profits and you pay yourself into your personal money. That makes doing bookkeeping and accounting stuff so much simpler. And if you have more questions about taxes or you, know, you wanna question the definitions of the words I said, talk to a CPA, right? I'm talking about just doing basic business bookkeeping. The nuances of tax law are extensive and difficult to decipher. I use Tax Slayer to do my taxes. I haven't had a problem yet, but I know a lot of you worry. So just, if you're scared, talk to a CPA. That's literally their job. Put down your phone and use a computer. My next tip is smash your fucking phone. <laughs> I'm kidding, but really, listing everything on your phone is a bad idea. Reason number one, TikTok's on your phone. And I'm gonna fall down a three hour concrete paving wormhole if I look at TikTok when I'm supposed to be listing on eBay. By taking photos on a camera, could even be your, your phone camera, I don't care. And then dropping those on your computer and doing this specialized, itemized, different place work. The process becomes so much faster and it might seem kind of counterintuitive to you, like, how can using more things save time, Blake? Are you high? No, I'm just saying that when you specialize in tasks, you have a phone right here specializing in taking pictures. You have a laptop right there specializing in making listings. You are much more efficient per listing. When I use my phone to list stuff on eBay, I can get like 10 an hour done tops. When I list sports cards on my computer, I can do 100 an hour. That is a huge difference, and I'm not doing anything different in terms of how I take the photos. I've just found a more efficient way to get those listings live on eBay or Mercari or wherever you sell stuff. This really works for all of those platforms that allow you to list from a desktop or a laptop, from a computer, a computer. You can list from a computer on. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more boxes. The third tip is a little bit of precognizance. You want to make sure you have boxes that are going to fit what you're selling. I have poly mailers, I have padded mailers, I have flat rate mailers, I have boxes of all shapes and sizes in my warehouse because the last thing I want to do is sell something and then spend 25 minutes hunting down the right sized box. That is the best way to lose money. By having your boxes, your mailers, your tape, everything you're gonna need to ship this stuff laid out ahead of you, organized even, you're gonna be saving so much time that you can be listing if you want to, or just relaxing, having a marg on the beach. The fourth thing I'm gonna tell you might be controversial. So before I say it, before you hate this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment below with your efficiency tips because we all know this list is not exhaustive. Perfection is a good idea 
as long as it stays an idea. The fourth thing that I think might be a bit controversial is it doesn't need to be perfect. My late grandfather, Ernie Zetsman, once said, it's good enough for who it's for. And I live by that. I would rather have 25 listings done that are 95% good, or probably even like 80% good, than one listing that is perfect. Right, if it's good enough for who it's for, it's gonna sell. Now if you're selling like fashionable clothing or stuff that really has to pop for someone to buy it, then maybe having really, really nice pictures matters more. But what I sell, sorry, a squirrel just jumped across the window. <laughs> But for what I sell, books, video games, collectible stuff like that, where all you have to do is take a photo and they either want it or they don't based on what the thing is. Like nobody's like, oh geez, I can't buy that Mortal Kombat video game because the picture's too dark. I don't wanna have a, like who cares? Hey, for clothing, it's different, but I don't sell clothing because like I said, I'm not very good at the details. I mean, look at this right here. I'm just using this microphone to talk into. Is it 100% perfect? No. Is it good enough? You're here. I'm not saying you should just have crap listings that are upside down and backwards and your thumbs over the camera, but what I am saying is don't get caught up on the details. When I list books, I do front cover, back cover, spine, copyright date. When I do sports cards, I, for the most of my cards I sell, I take one picture. I mean, I don't know, maybe I could be selling more sports cards if I spent five minutes getting the lighting perfect on every card, but these cards sell for like $4.95. I'm not gonna spend any more than like 15 seconds to list an item for $4.95. Don't get mad at a buyer, get mad at your price. The fifth thing is also kind of a little bit of a controversy because I see so many people not get this. Uh, and that's price your items high enough so if you get a lowball offer, you're still gonna be fine. Price your items high enough so if you get a lowball offer, you can still accept it and make some moolah. For me, generally, I'm gonna be accepting offers down to like 70%. I price my items high enough where if they just buy with no best offer, I'm making like three or four percent ROI, sometimes a lot more. And if they lowball me, or if they think they're lowballing me, but they're really not because old Blakey boy's two steps ahead, I can still accept the offer. They think they won, I know I won, and everyone's happy. Generally, you wanna have about, you know, 30% of fat you can cut off on a best offer and still double your money. Consistency is key. The sixth tip I have for you is a pretty common one, but I cannot understate how important this is. And I'm gonna give you two ways to make sure it happens, and that's list every day. I've been putting my eBay store as a higher priority the past few months, and I can tell you from experience, listing just like five things a day makes you sell so much more. So what I have, I have two strategies. Strategy number one for tip number six. So strategy six subset A is gonna be have drafts saved. Have your drafts saved so if maybe you're making YouTube videos all day, maybe you're at the beach having a fun time, maybe you're on your pontoon boat shooting turtles. That's probably bad, I probably shouldn't shoot turtles. Whatever you're doing, you can just go to your eBay app on your phone or on a desktop and publish those listings. You did the work beforehand to ensure your consistency because eBay, like most things, rewards consistency. The second way around this is have automated auctions restart. I have, I think it's down to like 60 cards right now, uh, ending on the auction on the weekend, and they relist on the weekend, some on Saturday, some on Sunday, because I take weekends off. eBay rewards consistency, and by having these drafts saved, and by having listings automatically relist on auction on the weekend, you're gonna ensure that you have a consistent flow of new listings. Now, my auctions that end on the weekends are primarily sports cards, and I have them for dirt cheap. They're cards that I don't think are gonna get a lot of traction. Maybe they will, 
but mostly I'm doing this to signal to eBay that yes, I am zoned in. I am listing every day and I am shipping three times a week. That's separate, but I do, I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just to keep things kosher. That's the video, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did like this video, give it a big thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe for more fun money-making content like this.